All right, we're on page 13 of the June 2011 exam, part C. These answers are supposed to be on an answer sheet somewhere. I'm sure I'll find one. Starts off with saying a model airplane. I love model airplanes, they're great. Anyway, it's flying due east at 1.5 meters per second, pretty slow. While the wind blows due north at 0.7 meters per second. Yeah, you're gonna lose this plane because that's, you know, that's almost half of your entire airspeed is gonna be the wind blowing it sideways. So anyway, the scale diagram represents these vector quantities. Using a ruler, determine the scale used in the vector diagram. Okay. All right, so let's see what this says. I've got 1.5 meters per second, and my scale is indicating 7 centimeters. 7 centimeters. So let's say 1.5 meters per second divided by 7 centimeters. And if I divide that out, if I divide it out, I get uh, like 0.21 meters per second per centimeter. Well, that seems a little odd for a scale. So let's just reverse them. Let's say seven centimeters divided by 1.5 meters per second. Now I get about 4.6 centimeters per meter per second. Well, both of those look good to me. I think I'm gonna go with a 4.6. So I get my answer sheet. Oh, look at here, there it is. One centimeter is equal to 0.21 meters per second. See, I had them both answered. Centimeters in meters per second, and meters per second in centimeters. So whichever one they asked for, we had that answer. Question 67, on the diagram in your answer booklet, use a protractor and a ruler to construct a vector to represent the resultant velocity of the airplane. So let's do this. All right, now uh, uh, the airplane wants to go 1.5 meters per second that way. The wind's going to blow it 0.7 meters per second that way. The beauty of vectors is you can let them act one at a time. So we can take this particular vector, which is that long, and put it over here. Or we could take this particular vector and bring it up here. That's my rolling ruler. So if it began here, it'll go this way and then that way. Well, in fact, it's going to do them both at the same time. And so this is going to be the actual resultant. Now, I've got this fancy little rolling ruler thing. I used to advertise these on TV. The big advertisement was that you could make your own graph paper. Because, you know, how often do you really want to make your own graph paper? Uh, you could do it that way. Uh, several other ways you could do it. Uh, it's worth, what, a point? is this thing worth? Yeah, it's worth one point. So this is uh, good enough. You don't have to use trig. You could have. You could have said uh, uh, 0.7 meters per second. 1.5, you could have calculated that. You could have found the angle saying that uh, the tangent of that angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So you could have solved for the angle and construct it that way. The length, uh, the resultant, would be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. But uh, using the graphical method, or drawing one vector and then the other vector, is actually the easiest way, uh, called the parallelogram method. But for a point, a lot of choices. Let's see what they want for 68. For 68, determine the magnitude of the resultant and determine the angle. Well, all right, I guess we gotta go do them all. Uh, now, we could've done this two different ways. One, using our scale, we could measure this and see how long it is in centimeters. 7.8 centimeters. And then I take my scale, and if I say 7.8 centimeters, times my scale, which is uh, point to one meters per second per centimeter. I can uh, cancel those out. Uh, centimeters cancel out. I'm left with meters per second. 7.8 times 0.21. 
I can see that's 1.63 meters per second, which is greater than 1.5, uh, but less than the sum of the two of them. That works. Uh, you know, real quick, I can get my calculator out, and I could use Pythagorean to calculate what it's going to be. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see if I can't try that out and see what I get. Uh, 0.7 squared plus 1.5 squared, and then take the square root of that. It's got to be that one, and I get 1.65. When your teacher goes to grade this, or whoever grades this goes, uh, they will measure yours using your scale, and they'll look for an answer. But uh, certainly, a couple of hundredths difference uh, would be acceptable uh, range of uh, graphical mistake. All right, that's good. And the angle, uh, gosh, you can get your protractor out, and again, measure the angle that you actually have. And... Uh, yeah, looking at uh, starting at 0, 10, 20, about 25 degrees. Or, once again, I can use my trig function and say uh, 0.7 divided by 1.5 is uh, 0.4, and then take the inverse tangent of that. Uh, let's see, inverse tangent, and I get 25 degrees. The answers are down there. All right, and that's uh, question 66 through 69.